Hi guys, it's Joe from Muzzle Mac. I figured I'd, I'd share a little secret with you. I'm going to pull the uh, tool timing thing here. You're not going to see my face at all because I really want you to see the lathe here. Um, the few years that we've been doing this, I've had a few tricks and I wanted to share them with you. Um, a lot of guys ask me, can I make a muzzle brake on my, on my drill press? I'm like, sure you can make a muzzle brake on your drill press, but you better start out with some pipe and make it a two-piece and make your front cap later. Because um, you just can't get a nice concentric bore that's dead center. I don't care how big a lathe you got um, out of a raw piece of a billet. Just That's mainly due to the inconsistencies of the metal. Um, you might hit a hard spot and it's going to push your bit off to the side and give it a little curve. Uh, but once you go back through there, that's just on the pilot board, but once you go back through there with your piloted reamer, a lot of that can get straightened out. Um, my buddy Greg, over at Blue Fort Design, he uh, actually helped me out with this run. He went ahead and did all the pilot bores for me on my, uh, my billets, quarter inch. Now, what goes in after this is I use a, uh, my next step up is a 7 16 piloted reamer. And it's basically a very long drill bit with some uh, slow turning flutes. And what it does is that front section there is quarter inch, so it's going to ride inside that hole and bring it up to the next size, which the 7 16 for most of you Crossman guys shoot the 2200 series. Um, and that's 1300 series too if you've already exchanged out the barrel. But, anyways, we want to true this break. We want to make sure that it's perfectly on center. Well, we can't go back through and redrill the hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to true it to the outside. So when you roll it across the table, that exit port doesn't have any hop to it. So how we do that is we're going to put the muzzle in into the chuck. We're not even going to catch it on the very first tooth of the chuck. Okay, then we're going to come along with the uh, live center, which rolls on a bearing. That's going to dead center this into the chuck. But the reason why you only want the first maybe half a tooth to grab is you want it to be able to pivot into this de uh, the live center. Then I'm fired up. I'm running the auto feed. Again, this is a manual machine. It's just a mini lathe, but it's been highly modified. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this back section that goes over the barrel. I'm going to go ahead and take a couple thousands off so I can show you what I'm talking about. Just a couple thousands. That shiny spot is actually was the high spot. Right here. And then that dull spot is the low. And that's on a, a T6 piece of billet aluminum. So what we want to do is turn the dull spot completely off. And then we'll explain further as we go. That's just a few thousands, but a few thousands here can equal quite a bit down on this end. So what we're going to do now is we're going to back the uh, tailstock out. And again, we just caught that very, very right on the tip there. We're going to come back, and we're pretty much going to do the same thing on that spot that we just turned down. So we know this is now centered in an equal wall all the way around. So now we're going to come into the exit port, or the muzzle end of the brake. We're going to get that into the, the live center. Clamp again. Like I said, you want it to be able to pivot into that live center. So we're only grabbing maybe the half, first half of the very first tooth here in the chuck. Now I'm only going to take a couple thousands off here so you can see the difference along. And I'm not going to go through the whole rest of the process because I'm sure you'll get it. And it gets pretty boring if you got to take a few thousands off at a time. I'm just going to find my high spot, or I should say my low spot, equal that up, and I'm going to go ahead and fire up. This one actually looks to be pretty, pretty darn close, so I'm going to back off just a hair and show you that no one break is going to be absolutely perfectly round. But the whole goal here is to get it as absolute close as possible. You see 
see I've actually got six flying off. I'm not pulling out strings. And I'm only catching the high spots. I may end up having to back it off a little bit if it gets any worse. You can actually hear the chatter. And that's just catching the high side. There's no way we're going to have perfectly run, but I want, this is for illustration purposes. See, we've been turning off the high side here, nice and shiny. And as you go around, you see the dull side. That's where it's low. So we're going to continue going back and forth across this break with the cutting tool until we're completely shiny, and that's going to make the whole break absolutely true with the bore, thus eliminating any chances of clipping, um, giving you a nice equal pressure as the pellet exits the exit port. And that's just one of the things we do here at Muzzle Mac, and it's just a garage shop. We're not some big whatever. I'm working on a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood table here with a mini lathe that's been modified, and then i got a mini mill on the other side. A few other tools. But anyways, good luck, and that's one of the reasons we don't do a muzzle brake on a drill press, or even a mill. It has to be done on a lathe. From the boring process for your pilot bore, dead center as possible, and you're going to use step up to each size till you get to your final bore. So good luck, and uh, hey, get your plank on. <laughs>